In this tutorial, we will create a small system that will automatically generate training data for imitation learning using Isaac Sim. Usually, to collect training data, humans operate a robot manually. This is a time-consuming task that may require days of work. But by using simulator, we can avoid this process. We will take the famous push T task as an example and create heuristic method to complete the task. By doing this, we will be able to generate unlimited amounts of training data with no human effort. Now let's see how to do this. As I have explained, our final goal is to create an algorithm with which we will be able to generate unlimited amount of data. Push T task is a task in which a robotic arm should move a T-shaped part onto an image of the same T-shape so that the T-shaped part lies precisely on the image. To create training data, we should be able to solve this task with a rule-based method. Our rule will be divided into three big steps. The first step is to align the T-shaped part orientation with that of the image. The second step is to adjust T-shaped part height coordinate. The third step is to adjust T-shaped part width coordinate. Basically, these are the only operations that we need. We also predefine points from which robotic arm will touch the T-shaped part. The robotic arm will move to one of these six points each new step. In this tutorial we will use Bezier curves frequently. Let's see what is a Bezier curve. A Bezier curve is a smooth, mathematically defined curve used in computer graphics and robotics to represent shapes and motions. It's built using a set of control points, which influence the shape of the curve. Bezier curve is given by this equation. This equation describes a smooth weighted average of the control points where the weights depend on a parameter t that moves from 0 to 1. This is a binomial coefficient which ensures correct weighting so the curve is smooth and starts or ends at endpoints. And this is a blending term which determines how much each control point influences the curve at parameter t. As we can see from this image, the first and last control points are endpoints of the curve. The intermediate points kind of pull the curve toward themselves. Here are some key properties of a Bezier curve. The curve always lies within the convex hull of its control points. A Bezier curve is an affine invariant that is transformations like translation, rotation and scaling, affect the curve exactly like they affect the control points. It is also smooth and continuous, this is why it is widely used for interpolation and motion planning. Now let's see how exactly we will manipulate the T-shaped part to get it to the desired position. First, the arm should move to the position from which it will push the T-shaped part. If it possible to move directly to that point, the arm will move in a straight line. If moving straight is not possible, the arm will move following the Bezier line. Bezier line control points are set depending on the T-shaped part angle. Then, we have to rotate the part to make orientation of it the same with the image. The manipulator is moved following the arc trajectory but since the part does not rotate strictly around the arc center, the distance between the target point and the end effector increases. When the distance exceeds a certain value, the end effector moves to the target point once again. After the T-shaped part orientation is set, the end effector moves to the position to push the part. Where to move is decided based on the push direction of the next stage. Push direction is decided based on the distance between the upper line of the image and the upper face of the T-shaped part. Then, the end effector pushes the part. At the stage 7, the end effector moves to position to push the T-shaped part in vertical direction to previous direction. Finally, the T-shaped part is pushed to its goal position. In reality, sometimes the T-shaped part does not move exactly as we intended. In that case, 
we restart from the stage that is most suitable to the current state of the T-shaped part. Now, let's see the code. Please download the ER5 simulation zip file and extract it to your home directory. The script to automatically create data is located in this directory. Open this file. Here we have a class that receives the T-shaped part in the end effector poses. These classes receive images from camera. In the data recorder class, training data is recorded. Each time step, one of the stages is executed based on the algorithm I described previously. Here we also publish the end effector target values to calculate angle values of each joint of the robot. In this script we save data in LeRobot format, but you can save data in any format you want. Now open the launch Isaac Python script. This script starts Isaac Sim and places the T-shaped part at random position. After position of a part is determined, rotation angle is decided randomly. Note, that depending on the initial position of the part, we choose angles so that the T-shaped part will not collide with end effector at the very beginning of the simulation. For inverse kinematics calculation, we are using the PIK-IK package. How to use it is described on this page. Before running the code for this tutorial, make sure that you have installed this package. The program for inverse kinematics calculation is simple. We create a subscriber for the target pose topic and a publisher for the joint states topic. Whenever the target pose topic is received, angles for each joint are calculated and published based on the target values. Now, go back to the UR5 simulation directory. Open the execute data collection shell script. Using this script, we can collect one episode of the training data. In this part we start Isaac Sim. This statement ensures that the script stops if the CD command fails. The ampersand symbol means that this script runs in the background. For debug purposes, inverse kinematics calculations are done in the separate window. When the data collection script ends, the other two programs are also killed. This shell script is run iteratively in the run data collection Python script using a subprocess module. Running the program is very easy. Build ROS packages using the Colkin build command. Run your virtual environment and run the run data collection script. The data collection process will start. We can see the calculated trajectory of the end effector by visualizing the push T image topic. The data will be stored under the my push t directory. To use Lerobot library for training, we should create a dataset following the required data format. How to do this is explained in this tutorial. So please see it. For reference, in this tutorial I provide an example dataset. To use it, Move it to the home directory. The code provided with this tutorial generates data in LeRobot version 2.1 data format. If you need data in version 3.0, please use this script to convert data.
Move it under this directory. Run your virtual environment. Execute this script. Specify training data local directory. Data in the new format will be generated. To run the training, move this script under the training directory. Now you can run the training. One important thing to mention is that the newest Isaac Sim and Lerobot libraries depend on different libraries. For example, Isaac Sim uses NumPy version 1. But Lerobot requires NumPy above version 2. So, the most stable combination that will work is this. You can install previous Lerobot versions from here. With newer versions of Lerobot, programs of this tutorial would also work. But some workarounds depending on library versions combination might be required. 